And I want to say one more thing. When I got back into the world, I missed being locked up. And you want to know why? I had that time with the Lord. Yeah. You know, out here, you got to remember, there's, um, it was amazing. I never thought I would think that. Man, lock me back up. I want the <laughs> Lord again. Welcome, everybody, to another Firestarters 24-7, our evening uh, broadcast tonight. And we just are so thankful to be here tonight. We're, we're located live here at the hospital, the Believer's <laughs> Church of Madera, California. And we are just Amen. jazzed up about Amen. what the Lord Jesus Christ is doing Amen. and what he's about to do tonight. Um, we just we have praised him and thanked him for his goodness and his mercy and his grace tonight. We thank you that there is a revelation tonight of the river of healing that flows tonight mm -hmm. in the airways. And we Amen. praise God that the leaves of healing are being released to the nations. Amen. And so we have another powerful testimony for you tonight. I'm so excited. I can't wait to get started with my brother Brian King here who, who is going to walk us through his life. And um, I know tonight that there's going to be healing there's going to be deliverance, and there's going to be salvation happening tonight in the, in the airways, Father. So be prepared for what the Lord has to say to you and amen. tonight, and, and uh, we're going to rejoice together with you as that happens. Amen. So, amen. so Brother Brian, God bless you. Um, <laughs> I've had a privilege of knowing you for not a long time, but, mm -hmm. but I have seen the, the great growth, Father, uh, that the Father has done in your life because you... You've given your life to him, and you've dedicated, and you serve him. And so uh, I'm going to go ahead and just let you start. Um, sure. And, and uh, I'll chime in there, you know, when, when sure. it's time. And, sure. And we're just, we're just going to rejoice in this together, praise God. All right, amen, amen. Well, he said, my name is Brian King. I was born in Norco, Riverside, California. And we moved up to uh, Coarse Cold, California, when I was about three. And it's a country town. Of course, called a small town. You know, I was a I was a country boy, just a just a good old boy kind of thing, and um, good life. You know, normal parents. Good. Uh, you know, just uh, two sisters and myself. And uh, well, you know, uh, time goes on. I, I I was like I said, I had a normal childhood, and uh, I remember my my first job as uh, in course called you know there. It is at a market, and. Uh, it just seems like at a very young age, you know, I just was fascinated with uh, partying and with, <laughs> you know, the kind of the wrong, doing the wrong things. Me and my, me and my best friend at the time, we just always seemed to do the wrong thing when we should be doing the right thing. So it kind of started off as a, as a young age, you know, and when we didn't just dabble in things. I mean, we would, we would, you know, you know, get, you know hang out in them for a while so it started at a kind of a young age but anyway like I said I had a normal childhood I you know was just a good kid and this and that and I and I and I loved, liked people loved people and I you know I did good for a long time but I just had that an addictive attitude I, I, uh, problem I had an addiction and I knew it because I just had this 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 void in my heart yeah. from a real young age and just just I wasn't enough and I was I've always been a thr thrill seeker so that didn't help because <laughs> I, I, I love thrilling I, you know, I, I would just uh, do whatever I could for a thrill and, you know I mean I, I, I was just very outgoing very uh, you know normal you know everything was good until you know I until I started partying this my 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 whole I don't want to elaborate on on all this part but I want to give you the details of of it because there's there's a lot that leads up to meaning the Lord and that's when all the greatness <laughs> and, and, but that's when everything comes alive to me but anyway I gotta tell you this to get there so you know I'll go through it kind of briefly because you know I don't I don't that's what I've learned in the Lord that I don't uh, you know my hands not my hands on the plow and I'm looking forward I I'm not gonna look back you know, I've learned all these. I've learned this. Yeah. yeah. And because uh, I used to walk in my past, and that's what kept me down. But to tell you, it, to tell you what's coming up is the amazing part. So I'm going to go through it kind of briefly. Sure. 
because it's like a lot of other people's story, you know, really is. Drugs and stuff drag people down. Yeah, I know amen, that. amen. That's the power of God that brought you out. Yes, That's the, the power of God that brought me out is my it's testimony. It's okay to share the past to use it. Yes, it? amen. You know, it is. It is. Right? It is. Yeah, amen. And so I, there's some certain things I want to talk about. Well, when I was in high school, I, like I said, I started uh, using and uh, I don't know how I gra graduated. My, uh, I remember being called in. I remember being called in to the counselor. And uh, I'll, I'll never forget this. Because he goes, Brian, it seems to me that you, I'm going to let you graduate. Don't get me wrong. But, and he knew already the type of kid I was. And it was like he was like, glad, glad to get rid of me kind of like thing. <laughs> it's like, oh, man. I, oh, man. Oh, I'm, well, I'm going to let you graduate. But where were you? You don't have all these credits. And where were you? during this algebra class and this and this what I did was manip manipulated the system where I knew someone in the office they were giving me it was just all bad they were giving me the credits when I wasn't attending the class and I, yeah so I left you know school at this you know and I didn't even have all the credits right when they, yeah. towards the end and he goes no I'm gonna let you go ahead and go out <laughs> yeah. of the school <laughs> the Buddha fellowship huh? yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh it was crazy and I and, and it was like that I always seen I, I got favor but it was the wrong it wasn't God's favor it was just luck it really was. It was I don't you know I don't know what was going on there but I graduated and um, I attempted college and I couldn't I couldn't do it what, what I'm talking about is my drug addiction was more important to me yeah. everything that I've ever attempted in my life was stopped because of drugs mm -hmm. you're just, mm -hmm. it's just how, and that's how they are everybody knows that when you have an addiction and and whatever whatever it is alcohol or drugs or whatever it usually destroys something in your life something something in relationships sure. and whatever sure. so even so so my next big thing was a really good job and it was a uh, Mm, let's see. Gosh, I went through so many jobs, it's hard to say. <laughs> but, uh, you know, what I'm trying to say is uh, my career job was uh, was doing construction, and I had a great job. It was doing ceilings. I was making good money. And and I do remember, you know, the drugs getting to me, too, to where you're, you're, you're waking up in the morning at the real late or you miss a you know, day, and you're, you're starting to use the excuses. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, so I lost that job. And then the next thing I, I, I remember losing was my sister got real sick after that point. It's my sister Michelle. I had two sisters. It's me and, and my two sisters. And my sister Michelle had gotten breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And I remember seeking the Lord in it a little bit. And we were, by, you know, off and on I would go to church. And I went to a, a church up in the mountains there. And I remember uh, just really fascinating. Lord, I was just like, wow, this is really, wow, they're really you know, praying for people, and, you know, it was really neat, and I was like, wow, amazed, and I thought, well, and I said a few prayers for my sister, and my sister didn't have a lot of faith, and, um, you know, and, and my parents, you know, my, my parents never went, took us to church, and, you know, I didn't know that much about the Lord or anything, mm -hmm. but I, I would hear stories, well, you know, well, these people were healed, so I told my sister, you've got to seek the Lord in this and she did and what happened was when they they, they diagnosed her she was already the doctors were already you know yeah. and they started um cutting the body parts off of her it was really bad it was a bad deal you know yeah you know yeah. she started going through the breast cancer and she it was a really dramatic time in my family's life because we were a really close family yeah and uh my sister I mean, I prayed at the time, um to the lord that she wanted to see her kids graduate and the doctors gave her, when she was first diagnosed, the doctors gave her mm, like a year or something to live. And she lived another 12 years. And, and she lived 12 years. But she was going, she amazed even the doctors down in Fresno and amazed the yeah. cancer center down there because she took every chemo possible. Wow. Exhausted all of them. Because you can stay on a certain, there's different types of chemo you can take. Mm -hmm. And you can stay on one for so long and then they got to take you off. My sister exhausted all the medicine, and, and, and she ended up dying, and it, and it crushed my mom. You know, you know, later on she ended up dying, but she lived for that 12 years, and, 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 I, and I knew that was answered prayer because she prayed that she wanted to see her kids graduate. Yeah. yeah. She didn't pray to be healed. <laughs> I want you to notice I didn't say that. She didn't pray to be healed. I know. I know. She, didn't, she just wanted, she prayed for the Lord for enough time to see her boys grow up and get, and get, and get on their feet yeah, and, and yeah. get out of school. Yeah. And she wanted that time with her boys, and, so, and, and she lived for that for that time. And yeah. I was still amazed by that. I was like, wow. you know, you know, 
know, I was really amazed by that. But then after my sister died, my, my mom um, was diagnosed with cancer, and my mom died. Oh, my goodness. And so with me being an, an addictive personality and using already, that caused me to use more. And I realized looking back now that, wow, it crushed me. It crushed me. Because what yeah. happened was yeah. is after that, my dad, it, it took my dad into a very dark place, and it, um, my family was kind of destroyed. Um, my brother-in-law, that was my sister's husband, he, he, he went the wrong direction too. He went kind of into in, in drinking more. And uh, he's just a really neat guy. You know, he just, uh, you know, but the whole, I watched literally my family destroyed. And we had no mm. clue. We had no power. I, hadn't, I wasn't close to the Lord. I didn't know. We had people, you know, my sister, you know, we, we, we had people on the outside. And, uh, but I was so into my addiction at this time that, and drawn back from it and, and you know, numb to everything going on and yeah. drowning it even worse because yeah. yeah. now I'm using a lot after this all this pain I'm talking about the pain of losing a family is is powerful it's strong yeah. it, it took me into a dark place so during this dark time I died twice wow. I, they I was I don't remember much all I remember is having one overdose <clears throat> with my girlfriend at the time she said that I uh, I was talking and my body started shutting down and it was because I had been doing too many much drugs, and, and I and I didn't have enough liquids in my in my body. Oh my goodness! Yeah. So I actually, dehydrated. Yeah. yeah, I was dehydrated so bad, and my body started shutting down. And when I woke up, the doctor was talking to me, and he was saying that, uh, you know, it's telling me what was going on. Well, sir, your your organs were shutting down. You, I actually damaged my kidneys to our. At the time, I must have been in my 30s. So so it damaged my kidneys to an old man. They, he said, "Wow, and they don't look like you're." A normal your your kidneys shall they look like you should look like sir yeah, you're yeah. you're really messing your body up here because he knew I was you know I was obvious I was using you know mm -hmm. and so after waking up I did hear a voice and I'm not sure you know I know it was the Lord now and and he said no you got to go back turn around you're going back. and so and and I and I didn't think much of it you know I said wow I wonder if that was God <laughs> I wonder <laughs> I wonder you know <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah, it was. And so the second time, I was in a in a, in a in my car. I was living in Sacramento at the time, and it happened again. You know, I and you know this is using a a lot. I'm you know my I'm kind of used to the fact of my losing my mom and dad. This is a few, few years later now. We're, we're catching up to where I am now. And um, the second time, I was in a Cadillac, and I once again using too much. You know, just a normal what's going on. Um, I, I locked up. I couldn't take my hands off the steering wheel, and I and the people actually, the my girlfriend's son. He was he was with me. His name he isn't Dustin. Just a wonderful kid, and I was still his dad to this day. He's a really neat kid, and uh, he goes. Uh, so Brian, you just went through a red light, and then we did it again and again. And I'm going, and I can't remember none of this. I, you know, I, this is, I'm blacking out. I'm doing what, I'm going through this, this overdose and I'm blacking and I'm going through Sacramento back to the house and I went to go get pizza, didn't even get it. And he goes, dad, are we, are we going to get this pizza? I said, sure, you know, sure. And I actually turned around and I knew something was wrong, but I couldn't, my, my mind was already starting to shut down and I'm trying to drive back. And all I remember was saying a little prayer. I remember, you know, I don't really know Jesus yet. I'm saying a little prayer, Lord, let me just get these kids home. You know, I just worried about him. And I'm telling you, that's when the song, Jesus, Take the Wheel. He just, yeah. he took the wheel. He had to have because he said, uh, Dustin, he was in the back seat saying I was just going through red lights and cars were stopping. <laughs> and you, I just, Jesus. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, so I made it home, thank God. Got into the driveway and uh, stopped the car. And then, um, my girlfriend at the time, she came running out and said, well, Brian, let go. The other kids got out, ran in there. I said, you guys get out. Uh, I'll be fine. I'll just get out. I couldn't move. I was stuck there. And so I, I, uh, I, uh, I, this, this, this part, you know, really, really blows me away. But he said I, I should have been dead. And, and there's, there, he's, the doctor said I was amazed, and he was, and he was really trying to scare me. And I thought, "Are you sure?" He said, "Yeah." I didn't think I was going to be able to, re, to bring you back to life. You should be dead. And so that's another time that I should have died. And that wasn't too far apart, huh? No, it wasn't very far apart. 
And um, I, was on a, I, was, I was on a destruction path. Everywhere I would go, I, uh, I, it was like a whirlwind of problems. You know, I was trying, I was self-destructing. Yeah, I was yeah, really absolutely. coming to the end. Yeah. You know, I couldn't put anything together. I I had some skills, but I would go back to work for a little while. Couldn't put it together no more. So, I moved back up to Corsco. My dad, my mom passed away. I moved back in with my dad, and I'm going to catch us up, and get right out of here, and into the my the good part. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I uh, moved in with my dad, and my dad got dementia. Now, my dad's getting sicker. He's got uh, he's losing his memory and. Um, there and again, I I don't have uh, I didn't have the Lord with me to to pray or anything, and I'm going, man, you know, what do I do? What do I do? And my addiction got bad again, and um, ah, this is the bad part of the story that it still tears me up today. So here I am in addiction. Whew. I got other family members that are torn apart too because remember my sister died. My brother-in-law mm-hmm. was unable to help me because he he gone through a lot and lost his wife and mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. my nephews and everybody. So my family, my, my other sister that's in Clovis now, <clears throat> everybody just basically left me to take care of my dad. So you got a drug addict trying to take care of his t- six dad. And I was doing, I was doing really well. I re- don't get me wrong. You were but functional. My functional. Yeah, yeah, and, I, yeah. and I would be there for dad when he needed me, but I wasn't really there. You know, I mean, I, you know, I tried to be as much as I could, but then there and again, I was, I was uh, you know, uh, time a casino was in my area and came to the area I did remember that and and then so my addiction went to gambling and, and that's a whole nother story <laughs> my dad was getting sicker and sicker and, and my dad gave me the trust over his account mm. bad mistake mm-hmm. you never give uh, an addict you know somebody like me a a bunch of money yeah yeah so now here I have this credit card now and uh, my sister asked me how I was doing, and of course I would lie to her, you know, and how's dad doing, and well, he's getting worse, I need help here, you know, and she kind of came to the rescue a little late, because at the time I had that credit card, I was going to the casino, spending, uh, spending all dad's money, not meaning to, but not having no, I didn't have any um, no strength to do it. No strength. Yeah. 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 I knew I was doing wrong, but I still continually, well, we'll just use a little bit. A little bit turned into a lot. A lot turned into a I ended up going through a lot of money. Sure. Not meaning to. It still crushes my heart today. But here's the deal. My, my sister came to the rescue, filed charges on me, you know, and, um, and that's part, part of my charges. At the same time, here I am needing more money because I went through some of Dad's money now, and I didn't want to go through any more. I said, whoa, 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 I better stop after quite a bit of money yeah. believe me quite a bit of money yeah I stopped you know and um, and uh, whew, and then I, uh, I I I knew that I needed to be home more so I was but I needed more money so I allowed even you know I, I had a different addictions at the, you know and I was selling to try to make money and so I allowed that property now to plant and, and I planted a whole lot of plants and a marijuana that for more money, and I, and I allowed another grower to come up on there, and what the deal was, they were going to give me a bunch of money in the beginning, in the middle, and in the end, and they did, and uh, luckily, my sister came and got my dad, because I wanted him gone after that point, and I, he needed more help, he was yeah. getting sicker and sicker, yeah. and I'm getting sicker and sicker, and yeah. it was just bad. <laughs> two and different kinds of two sickness, different huh? kinds of sickness. Yeah. yeah, so, so now, I'm under investigation, I don't know it, but I'm under investigation. And uh, they're getting ready to get me. They're coming to get me. Mm-hmm. And I do remember feeling it. I kind of remember, you know, I've always had this. I've always listened to my heart and listened, you know. I always something. I knew something was wrong. My girlfriend at, the, at that time, she goes, you know, Brian, you're, you're on a self-destruction path. I said, I know. I've been all that way in my life. This yeah, is nothing yeah, new to me. Yeah. You know, I'm living on the edge. I've always lived on the own, edge. Though, huh? Yeah. And I even had a, an officer come, a friend of mine um, that I had grown up with, he come and warned me. He said, Brian, you're being investigated. You, you got to do something. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna get in trouble. And, uh, they're going to they're gonna come at you with everything. And I, and I literally wanted, I was tired. I didn't care. I, look, I told you I was on a destruction path. I knew that I knew that I spent the money I shouldn't have. I couldn't make the money back. I was a gambler. I'd take... Oh, here's my gambling problem. I'd take like $2,000 and I'd just run to the casino trying to make it 30000 so I could pay my dad back. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. A, that's the money. That's the kind of money I'm talking about. It's that's you know. Yeah, that strategy. I get you. I had a strategy. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work. It never worked. So, <laughs> the long story short, now, I was under investigation. The day they came, I was surrendered. I was I was done. I was literally sick. I my dad now, mind you, with my sister. Thank God, because when I put the marijuana on there too, my dad had already gone with my sister. Thank God. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, but it's, so here I've got three hundred, you know, a lot of plants, three hundred plants on ten acres, and, and they're coming to get me for this. The helicopter went over the whole thing. I was being followed, not paranoidly, really followed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, long story short, I, the day I get arrested, I came out. And uh, on the front, on the porch there, it's up in the mountain on 10 acres. And I came out on the porch, and I literally said, I'm done. This is it. I know they're coming today. I'm just going to sit down. And she came, my girlfriend at the time, you know, she came out and said, um, Brian, you, we're, you're going to lose everything, aren't you? I said, yeah. Today is the day. Today I'm done. Today is the day. I wow. am done. I, I was so hurt, and I hurt. I was, I was unable. <clears throat> this is the part that's hard. Okay, yeah, I know it's, it's okay. hard because see, the devil wants to destroy you and your family. That's right, and that's what he was doing. Yeah, and I was so tired <clears throat> of my addiction, I couldn't stop, mind you. I was so tired and and hurt and broken, and um, I hurt so many people along the way and was unable, literally, could see it. And you're you're talking about a person with a heart. I love people, but I couldn't help them. Mm-hmm. really hurt. You know how I felt like I was in a glass bottle or something where <clears throat> I could shout at people but they couldn't hear me and I could try to tell them like I love somebody or, or you know don't go that way but they couldn't hear me. Mm. That was I felt trapped. <clears throat> so the day I got arrested my friend was with them. He came along and you know he was he's a very good guy. <clears throat> I'm not saying a lot of names just for just you know because that's fine. You know, he's a sheriff at the time. <clears throat> he came with them, and a whole SWAT team came. Mm. And they expected to get this, you know, expected to get me with a lot. But at the time, you know, you know I thought I was wise. I wasn't wise. Here am I getting busted, right? Yeah. But I had already gotten rid of a lot. <laughs> so I didn't have anything anymore, and the plants were still out there. So they did get me for charges. And so they got me for... Um, oh, sorry. Yeah. I won't do that. So anyway... So I, uh, I, uh, I surrendered. Like I said, the day they were coming to get me, um, I do remember my friend come up and saying, "Well, Brian, you know they're they're taking you to jail today." I've been arrested before, but nothing like this. Mm-hmm. They, the, he said the DA's got me on, uh, you know, sales, and you know, with my background record along the way, I got you know a few you know uh, thefts and things like that to to for my habit to keep my habit going. I all the other bad stuff with sure, it. Sure. So I had a little record. So they they were getting me with, and I was going to prison on this one. So they were getting me with sales um, and uh, and cultivating and um, um, of oh, elder abuse because of my sister's filing the charges and all these charges. I mean, they had them stacked. They had they had I think eleven charges on me. <laughs> eleven theft and. Um, uh, uh, just just going on and on and on. A lot of some of them were dropped, and but a long story short, there here I am now. Now I'm now I'm incarcerated. Yeah. Now the healing part begins. The Lord meets me there. You know, I was so tired, and I came. I had a reckoning. I, I looked back at my life, and I I was done. I was tired. I came to the end of myself. You know, I left out a lot of things, but I, that's because I got getting to the good part now, and that's when the healing began. Yeah, yeah, amen, amen. And so there was a there was a pastor. He came along. I'm incarcerated now. I'm facing ten years. By the way, I want to say that because it's important. I'm facing ten years. And I and I when I was locked up in a cell one night, I told uh, the Lord I was I was uh, I told my girlfriend, look, I can't do this time. And Brian, you want me to get you a lawyer? We can't afford a lawyer now. I spent all the money. That I had uh, I had I had a little over thirty thousand from what I had done, and I spent all the money right before I had gotten incarcerated. I think I had like 3000 left, and I gave it to uh, the people around me at the time to, to try to live, in, because I wasn't there no more. I was providing for them. And um, so my 
a good friend of mine called me and I'm in a jail cell. Now, I, I've already been arrested. And uh, they said, Brian, are you all right? And I said, no. Well, you know, they want, they want, that I can't do all this time. You know, I'm really, I'm hurt, I'm stuck. You know, I don't know what I'm gonna do. And, and um, they said, well, you want to just get me a lawyer? We, and, they, and all my friends couldn't even do it. You know, they were users and druggers, drugs and acquaintances, I want to call them. Couldn't handle, couldn't help me. Sure, yeah. You know, they said they would. They never came, nobody came in to bail me out. Um, my sister, now my family don't like me. My sister has got my dad and, you know, they, they all hate me. Yeah, of because, course. Yeah. Because, you know, they're, they're yeah. filing, they were filing elder abuse against me, mm -hmm. which I never abused my dad. Never did. No, never did anything like that. What, how they can get you on something like that is allowing the drugs to, and, and finding out that you did drugs. But dad, dad didn't actually know what I did. I, yeah. I tried to hide that from him sure. you know, the best I could. Yeah. But like I said, still. Yeah. It is what it is. Yeah. And so those charges were actually let down, thank God. But here I am in a cell one night, and this person was calling me. He said, Brian, are you all right? I said, no. You know, I, I'm thinking I'm, I can't do this 10 years. That night, I do felt, I never felt this kind of presence. But the devil, he was there. And I do know that because I, I wanted to stuff my life out. I came to the end. I really came to the end of my life. And I was looking at, literally, I remember, for, it went on, I guess, like three days, looking at a ways I could hang myself, kill myself. I was suicidal at this point. You know, and literally all my, you know, because it just, because all I kept repeating was, I let my dad down. My sister hates me. Mm -hmm. My friends are, whoa, what happened to Brian? Oh, I, I, I'm locked up. And they're trying to get 10 years, you know. All this is, could be worse. It's going to get bad. And all these charges kept coming up. And then... When I thought it was all over, the elder abuse charge came up, and I thought, "Oh man, they're going to hang me, right?" Yeah. Like, and elder abuse, what's that mean? You know, Dad wasn't, you know, wow, why, why would they bring that on? It just it, was, it, it floored me. So <laughs> I'll never forget it. Right after I hung up the phone for talking to him, um, I fell down on the um, floor in that cell, and I asked the Lord. I said, "Lord, say you got to save me." I uh, I can't go on anymore. You know, I just hung up the phone. I said I can't go on no more, and that's when it happened. Um, the when the Lord came to me that night, all I remember is it wasn't really words. It was just a peace, a peace and a reckoning that I'll never forget. <clears throat> and the next day, whew, the next day there was a healing already happening, and um, and a hunger in my heart. Praise God. And it, this is the, where it, my whole life changed. And it took me to come to that point of almost killing myself, wanting to snuff my own life out. And um, coming to that point on that cell floor, and uh, I'll never forget it. I can't even explain it. it was, uh, there was not a lot of words said. There was just a comforting. Yeah. And all I said was, Lord, you've got to help me. You've got to help me. Where are you? You know, Where are you? Thank you. And uh, he did. He came into my heart. I didn't say any prayers or anything. Later on, through the chapel ministry, I was saved. Yeah, yeah. I was rededicated. I was saved before. But now something had changed. Yeah. The Lord had comforted me. Yeah. And so the healing process began. Thank you, Jesus. And it, it was amazing. I, I prayed to him that, and I started feeling better like I am right this moment. <laughs> I'm gonna, you're going to see me smile and change because yeah, I'm going to start right, telling yeah. you the good part now. The Lord is good. The blessing started <laughs> happening. And I'm telling you, and I, and I was seeing things differently. I was hearing things differently. I had a confidence now. When I went to talk to the lawyer, the lawyer goes, well, Brian, you know you're facing 10 years. And I said, no, no. Nah. <laughs> I don't know how, but I, I'm not, I don't accept that. And this lawyer, he, you know, and uh, another jail person <laughs> said, Brian, fire him. So I did. I said, I, you got, I got to fire you. And he said, uh, it, well, actually, he was a, a public pretender. Yeah, public defender. Yeah. Public yeah. defender, right. Yeah, yeah. We call him public yeah. uh, pretenders. I got you. And they basically will do whatever the DA told. Well, told yeah, they kind of have. So I got another one, place. and it was, a, it was a, a woman. I'll never forget her. She, um, uh, to this day, I wonder if she knew the Lord. Because she just, she, she goes, well, okay, I'll, 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 what do you want me to tell the judge? I want you to tell the judge I can do three years. And I prayed about it. And the judge looked at me like, <laughs> and shook his head. And I said, Lord, I want to do three years. I thought, I can do three years. I mean, you know, if they give me six with half, I'll do, I'll do it. You know, good behavior, six with half. 
and then, but I can only do three years. I mean, uh, seriously, I, I can only do three years. Yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> this is a good number for me, and I thought maybe that would be that's why. <laughs> I guess. Lord, I don't know why I picked three. I don't know. <laughs> Come on. To this day, I wish I would have said one or two, but no, I needed that time, really, because this is the healing part. So I got involved. And I was all of it. after that night. I'm serious. The Lord, He He installed, downloaded something to me. Then it's the Holy Spirit. He downloaded into my heart and changed just enough of my heart to give me hope. So, so you're saying that you thought that you it was better for you to be there for three years? Yes. Because because of what the Lord wanted to do in your life. Yes. Man, there is people. There's people listening. There's people listening to this, and 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 it could be in a prison cell. Yes. And uh, and they're they're wondering that, that you know what's going on here. Why would you want to go ahead and accept three years yes. if you could have done less? I could have. And and um, and and the power of that is that you knew yes. that if you got released, that you wouldn't have been able to no. get as close to the Lord as you did if you no. stayed in there for three. Years. That's yeah. powerful, brother. It is powerful. And yeah, I didn't realize that yeah. now. You know, I didn't realize it at the time. Yeah. As I look yeah. back, you can you, you can see God's work in your own life. That's right. And so during this three years, and it took exactly three years, and that's what I did, by the way. But, you know, I want to say Praise this real God. quick. I want to say this real quick. I remember the day that the judge did that, and, and I, I remember saying a prayer every time he would do that. I said, Lord, um, let's do the three years. And, he, and, I would, and I knew that I knew that it was three years. I don't know how I knew, but I did three years. But I knew it would be upstate. I'd have to go to prison. I wasn't going to do jail time. Yeah, yeah. And so... <clears throat> I was okay with that, and because I, like I said, at this point my heart had changed already. After that prayer and that night, he already gave me a, a he comforted me, and he gave me a peace. And so, <clears throat> I was in, I was in county jail, and I, like I said, I started seeking the Lord there, learned what I needed to there. But then I, that day came, I went off to prison, and so I'm off to prison now. Now in prison, I had to seek the Lord a little more um, because of just the politics of prison. And this and that, and what what uh, you know what was going on, and there was a l little bit of riots going on, and this and that going on, and so I was using my faith even more, and I was getting attacked because I was a Bible thumper, a God person, and um, the politics there, you know, didn't like that so much, right? So I kept praying against. It. I said, Lord, you've got to protect me here, you've got to help me here, Lord. I want to seek you with all my heart, but you know, I really don't want to get beat up every day, or I don't want. <laughs> You know, I don't want to catch an, I don't want to catch another charge. I don't want to be that much like Jesus. <laughs> hey, and so he did. What the amazing part was, so the day I was supposed to be beat up, so they were going to have a three-on-one, which it's, it's three of, of your race, white guys, going to come and beat you up because of me serving the Lord. Going to, instead of their meetings, I would go to church. Instead, I would, remember, I'm seeking, I'm on fire for the Lord now. I'm, I'm watching uh, TBN. I'm, I'm, you know, uh, oh man, I was just really on fire. I was attending anything, and they didn't really like that. You know, the politics, they just didn't like it. Mm -hmm. Prison, mm -hmm. the people, I had to follow their rules or something's going to happen, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah. the day they came to beat me up, I prayed. I, the Lord said, no, be brave. Go out there and stand against whomever you're supposed to stand against. Come on. Okay, now this is the amazing part. Joshua King. Yes. <laughs> hey, and, and believe me, now I'm still a young Christian. I don't know that much about what the Lord's going to do. Yeah. All I know is I'm supposed to pray to him and, and, and ask him and let him know what's going on. Yes, so I yeah. did. I said, Lord, they're going to beat me up today. Would you please protect me or give me the strength to survive this and or... You know, um, whatever you're going to do, please do it now. Yeah, he said, yeah. and all I heard was, be brave. Go out there and stand against. It's like the Goliath thing. It's go out there and face that giant. And I'm not that big of a guy. You know, I'm just, you know. And the guys that were coming to beat me up were pretty scary. They're big. Yeah, yeah. And there was going to be three on one. It was not really fair. I'm not going to win this battle. <laughs> right? This is not the, the, the really cool part. So he said, be brave. Go and stand against them. So I am. I go out there. And it was raining that day, I remember. I thought, oh, great, I'm going to get slammed around and hit and fall in the mud. Yeah. And get all, it's going to be bloody. It's going to be bad, right? I'm, I'm a little scared. And I remember the Lord said, be brave. So I walked right up to the guy, and I said, look, I don't know what this is about, but, you know, um, according to your politics, you say that we can serve the Lord. We, you say that we can, you know, freely serve the Lord. So why is it that all of a sudden now you want me to beat me up because you think I'm a fake or I'm hiding behind the Bible? I don't know what it is. So please tell me, so I at least know 
why I'm going to fight you right now, right? Yeah, <laughs> what, yeah. What's going on? And he says, oh, well, I just, I, just, I just figure you were one of these wimpy guys that were hiding behind the, the Bible or something like this. I said, no, I'm, hiding beca- I'm not hiding behind anything. I'm serving a, a God that's, uh, that's amazing, and he's changed my life. And, you know, I don't, I don't use no more. I've been clean now. You know, well, of course, I'm locked up, but there's still drugs in well, jail. Plenty, yeah. Plenty and I, and I turned yeah. him down. I would, hey, Brian, do you want some of this and that? No. And I, I was already healed from that Yeah. because of the pain it did me. And um, he goes, oh, hold on. Let me be back. Or I'll be right back. And I thought, all right, fine, sure, whatever. And so <clears throat> turns out the other guy who came along said, well, Brian, you're right. You know, you're, you are right. But, you know, the next time we have a meeting, we want you to come to it and not get to go to the church and whatever. And I said, I can't do that. Stood on, I did what the Lord told me. He said, Brian, be brave and speak. You know, yeah, we'll yeah, speak whatever yeah. you speak. You know, I just, I just knew that's all I really heard was be brave. So, and I wasn't going to tell him because as soon as I would have told him, I'm not going to go to church and then they got me. Then I can't go back to church. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Especially if I tell these people now, this guy that was standing in front of me at the time, if I tell him I can't go to church, they're not going to let me go no more. So I said, no, I'm going to continue to go to church. And then he said, well, all right. Since you put it this way, and since you were man enough to come out here and stand up and tell us, you know, this, that we know you're not faking. There's a lot of people that hide behind this book, and, and they do this and that, and we don't need those kind of people on this yard. And he's just giving me his little speech. Sure, sure. And the whole time I just kept remembering, thank you, Lord. I'm saying it under my breath, thank you, Lord, thank mm-hmm, you, Lord. Because mm-hmm. then they would have kicked me off the yard, and that's just one little thing that happened, Okay. There was other little incidents, but and I kept praying, and God was there. It was amazing to me. That is like here that another is. for instance. Okay, there was a, there was a fight, and there was all these guys getting charges, and I didn't need no more time. And it, because of the fight, there was a guy stabbed, and the guy didn't make it. He died. And what had happened was, is it was the whites against the um, I think surrender. Is that a different different gang? It's a racial thing. A racial thing. Yeah. 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 Prison pr- prison politics. Yes, not yes, good. Yeah. Yeah. So you're you have to back up. You're, you have to fight. You don't have a choice. So I'm out there. I didn't have to because by the time I, I was out there getting ready to have to go fight, I, I didn't have to. I didn't have to get my hands bloody or anything because then the COs come in and they broke us up. Mm-hmm. But I remember praying again, Lord, Lord, please stop this. You know, in Jesus' name, I'm praying, you know, and under my tongue again, please stop this. Ma'am, all of them came in, tear gas, everything. And it stopped me again, and uh, and it saved me again. Yeah, yeah. It saved me again. Yeah, praise God. And and there was so many instances. I needed a job in there, and I needed to keep serving the Lord. And I, uh, and it always seemed to work out. And the Lord, one day, I'm praying to the Lord, and I I said, Lord, I was doing a study either through the church there, and he, and it was about finding a purpose for yourself that the Lord wants to give, especially, you know, a, 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 you a, menace, a, a, a job in his kingdom. Mm-hmm. He wants to give you an expected end. And he gave me the scripture, uh, Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. Yeah. And it reads an expected end. It reads that God wants to give you in a purpose. And he wants to give you a reason. And he wants to, and he wants, you know, it, basically you, want, you need to pray for it. And, and I'm doing the study and I'm thinking, wow, Lord. I want to serve you with all my heart, and I, I want I want a purpose. I want an expected end. I want you. I want to follow you, and I want to. I want to live your life that you have cut out for me, not my life that I had that I thought I could go do on my own. Uh-uh. I want to live a powerful life for you, and I want to help other people, and I want to do this. So I remember praying that prayer. And right before one day I was going to the yard, I would go to the yard, by the way, walk around and pray in tongues and walk around and just pray and pray for the yard and pray for peace. And so one day, he, you know, I'm, I'm getting ready to go out and they're getting ready to open up my jail cell. And uh, I heard prayer tent. He says, prayer tent. I didn't know at the time what prayer tent is, never heard of a prayer tent. I had no idea, you know, what a prayer tent was or even what do you do in a prayer tent. He said, maybe go pray. <laughs> or I didn't actually know if it was, you know, our temple is a prayer tent or he's talking about pray more or anything. I didn't understand it. So I go out on the yard and I'm walking around the yard and I'm realizing it's going to be a way to reach people and a ministry for me. And more revelation started coming to it and the more revelation I got about it was I, I visioned and I seen in a vision a huge tent with three 
tiers in it, three three poles. Okay. Okay. And it's it's gonna be a prayer tent, and 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 I'm praying about it more. I Lord, you're gonna have to teach me all about this prayer tent. I said fine. And you know, you know, I got you know. He didn't say fine. He just I, I, that's all. I, you know, that's left it at that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I didn't think much about it. I wrote it down and, and stuff, and I didn't think much more about it. And uh, but that was my purpose. So I knew there was going to be something coming along. It hasn't came along yet. It's only been one year since this. Well, year a little over a year. Sure. Year, year sure, and six yeah. months. But it hasn't come along yet. But I do know I've been getting trained for it. And what now is? Um, oh, I want to get back to this. Right before I left, the, the day I'm, I'm getting out of prison, I, I was, they were praying for me and telling me, well, Brian, of course you know, you know, you, you know just to get, to get involved in a church and we want you to you know, pray you know, about this. And so I did. And I prayed that I would find one quickly and that uh, when I did, it had to be a powerful church to keep my interest. It had to be, you had to be their Lord and it had to be a, a, a very powerful church and a strong church mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. hold my interest. And it's so funny because when they drop you off, we're right here. Mm -hmm. We're right here by the bus station. Yeah, and they dropped yeah. me off. Yeah, I I could have went to I could have paroled to uh, to Fresno, and I could have paroled um, you know uh, I don't forgot else to Sacramento because I had lived in Sacramento and I lived in Fresno, and or here, and I said no I got to go to Madera, and uh, I didn't know why I said that, and and I do now today. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. it dropped me off right here, and it was Sunday, and I uh, it's um it's amazing. I, t I, I was thinking, okay, Lord, I need to find a church. My very first, you know, right off the bat, I, wanted, I needed to find a church. And I walked right past the church, and it was, it was going on. And I, I, and I came around, and Caleb, uh, the pastor's son, mm -hmm. he, he came out. He was standing out there, and he was getting ready to walk in. I said, excuse me, sir, you know, is this a, you know, a really good church here? Is it a powerful church? You know, is it, you know, what's this church about? And he goes, well, my dad's a pastor in there. And uh, he said, yes, it's a very good church. Why don't you come by? You know, why don't you come by sometime? And I, I thought, okay, I might do that. So I thought, well, it couldn't be that easy. You know, I just got to, you know, I'm yeah. wet from the bus and I'm over here. Yeah. Thinking, this couldn't be that easy. There's no way. There's no way it could be that easy. You know, Lord, you know, is this the church? I didn't think it was. So I walked around at the corner and I'm getting ready to go down, look for other churches, you know, and, and go down this way. And I walked down and something said turn so I turned and I walked this way and he said turn again and I turned again and I ended up right back at the front door <laughs> and he went walked me right full around circle the church, full circle yeah and and um I said okay okay and I came in and I'll never forget this part and um they were uh they were speaking about uh oh the message it was amazing they were speaking about um Different churches, and, 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 and how if you were to uh, look for a church, you know, and that day, you know, what you know, that it would have to be a you know, a good church and a, a godly church, but you can go into a church where there's no power, you know, you just you can feel it. And it, it, I don't know what it is, but there was power as soon as you walked in these doors. And in that day, um, I think it was Mike was pastoring our pastor Mike here at, here at Believer's Church, and he was he was pastoring that day, and um. He ended up having a word for me, and I stood up and 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 I told him a word of knowledge, a word of knowledge, and and I and I stood up and I was telling him about my situation a little bit. I was homeless at the time because I didn't, I refused, by the way, to go back up in the mountains because I I had a, I want to call them acquaintances because they were really weren't friends. They were just a lot of acquaint acquaintances, and I knew I might go back into my old ways, yeah, especially yeah. if I ran into. Well, they were your friends in that world. Nah. Yeah. They were all using probably and still. Yeah. I didn't want to go back up there. So I, I would, by the way, my choice was to be homeless down here than rather go up there yeah. Yeah. and find a place to live. And so I paroled. They let me parole homeless. I, I think I put the mission as an address, the mission for an address, because you have to have an address when you parole. And I, I just put, I'll, I'll go to the mission. So they, they released me that way. And I really was, my intentions weren't to go to the mission. But anyway, so I'm homeless. But I came in here, and Mike said, uh, I told him about prayer tent, and he says, wow. He said, the Lord told you this. And that was my very first day at the Believer's Church. And I'm telling you, man, my life, the Lord, and, and by the way, not only did I know that I knew, you know, I didn't have any tangible, this is your church or anything like yeah, that. Yeah. I had a peace when yeah. I came in here. Amen. And I had a, a, a know that I know feeling. Amen. 
I came in and um, the word of knowledge, I had, I had a piece of paper I had it written down on. I got to get the tape again, but what was spoken to me. All I remember was giving, telling him about the, my prayer tent and about the Lord uh, telling me about it. And I spoke a little bit about how um, I needed a church and, and everybody welcomed me. And I'll never forget this. I, there was um, different brothers and sisters that I know today now that were handing me, you know, just helping me out, cared about me and what I said. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize that, you know, I was just, I just thought I was, here I am kind of a convict. You know, yeah. I'm out fresh out of prison. You're, you're not, you know, you're kind of, yes, I'm one of those guys. I yeah, messed yeah, up. Yeah. I, you know, now I got a number, whatever. Are right. you, able, you feel in? that yeah. way. Am I going to fit in yeah, here? Yeah. How am I ever going to get a job? You know, I didn't know where I was going. Yeah. And, I kept telling you the Lord was with me the whole time because of my prayers, my faithfulness, my heart was right. I, like I told you, I was I came to my end, and the Lord knew this the whole time. Now, that's right. Now here I am. Now, now we're getting to where I'm at, and it was exactly it was it was. Um, see, I, I can't. I got out. It's been a year and three months for me that I've been out. Praise the whole God. time. I, I, pro I told myself and I told the Lord, by the way, I got to go back for one second. I forgot a, this one part in my, in my story and my, my, my thing here. I made an oath to the Lord when I was locked up. And I had a backpack that I, when I was homeless, it got stolen. And I had this oath written down, but it's still in my heart. It's in, it's in my memory. But I said, Lord, for the rest of my days, I shall serve you. I'm uh, making this oath to you. Yeah, for the, the rest of my days that I, that I shall serve you and um, follow you. I shall not turn to the left or to the right, and, uh, and, I'm, and, and I will never give up. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I will use me as a tool, a minister, or anything you want to use me as. Please, please help me to become this a new person in you. And I, you know, so it's, it's very, you know, I didn't know that much about the Bible, you know, still. I, I did, but I didn't, you know, I'm still baby Christian, mm -hmm. still, you know, mm -hmm. still am a pretty young Christian. And I, I just remember, and it was, but it was from the heart because, and I know he knew, he knows this. Sure. And um, you know, it's uh, I'm still holding true to it today. And what I, all I can say is, I promised him that I would stay plugged in, and I've done that consistently for yeah. a year now. Yeah, we can tell. Yes. <laughs> and it's been so amazing, and now I'm just blessed left and right. Yeah. So here I am out now. I'm homeless. I'm out, and I'm coming to this church, and uh, Pastor Mike one day said, Brian, do you need any help? And I said, no, the Lord's got me. He's got me. And he said, wow, he'll never forget that I said that to him, because they were going to offer to put me in a uh, motel or something. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. at the time, I got a funny feeling at the mission. Don't get me wrong, the mission's a wonderful place. Yeah. I went there, and I, I would go there off and on. But I knew the Lord had something different for me. I don't. Mm -hmm. I just knew that I knew. Yeah. I don't know. He kept yeah. the Holy Spirit kept telling me, "No, this is not where you're going to end That's up. Right. Just, you yeah. don't have to go here, Brian." That's right. So I was. I, I found an abandoned car, and I'm in it. And by the way, I was only homeless for three months. And um, there was a pastor guy, another pastor, a different pastor. And it's funny how Lord puts people in your life. Yeah, that's right. And I ran into an old friend. His name's uh, Jody. And I ran into Jody, and he says, "You know, Brian, hey, how are you doing? I, I saw you in jail, you know, and this and that. I seen him from jail, and he said, uh, would you like to come and live here? You know, I can use a little roommate. I know you need to get off the streets. And long story short, that was the beginning of where I'm at now. Yeah, I, yeah. I, um, it was an apartment complex. And the, the actually, the owner of these apartments, well, the manager of these apartment complexes is a pastor. And the Lord's put all these people in my life, and um, I, of course, I was praying to, to to find a place and a job, mm -hmm. and that happened, like I said, within three months. I kept staying uh, faithful and and plugged in, and coming to this church. And it was funny when John first met me. I said, John, you know, if there's anything I can help you with, please. Pastor John. Yes, yeah. Pastor John. Yeah. I said anything I can help you with, and I was here, and he were, and, and and to this day, I can tell you. Every time you'd see me, I'd be here early at the church, opening the doors, yeah. kind of, yeah. wanting, you know, coming in. I would, I, I volunteered for everything, and, and, you know, could I help you here? Could I help you there? And I was just, I just knew I needed to stay close to the Lord. And the love here was amazing. Yeah. All of you guys, shaking my hand, just, I, and instantly, you know, it's that, that spirit. Amen, man. Amen. It's that spirit. It was I feel the love right now, bro. Man, it was so, <laughs> it was so amazing, you know. And here I am, you know, homeless. Literally, you know, I would leave here and I would leave and walk out on the streets, but yeah. I had the peace of God with me. And I could go sleep anywhere. I, I, I really couldn't, uh, you know, just had the peace of God. 
And I want to say one more thing. When I got back into the world, I missed being locked up. And you want to know why? I had that time with the Lord. Yeah. You know, out here, you got to remember, there's, um, it was amazing. I never thought I would think that. Man, lock me back up. I want the <laughs> Lord again. Because that's <laughs> crazy. Who, who do you know gets out of jail or prison and yeah. say, put me back in there? That's Why? Right. Because in a cell, when you don't have cell phones and you don't have your job in 24, you know, you, you, the world, mm -hmm. I had the Lord and I had these people around me in yeah. prison that were amazing, yeah. being anointed. Yeah. And that, that time with the Lord was so neat. That's right. I literally remember telling a couple people, you know, whew, it's hard out here, but I'm telling you what, the, your alone time is so important with the Lord. That's right. Yeah, preach it, brother. I'm telling you, yeah. man, I've never heard of anybody. When I got out, I literally wanted to go back in. Let, lock me back up. I'm, I, I need my time with Jesus. Yeah. Who yeah. says that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I pay my bills. I'd stay on my uh, face. Right. <laughs> oh, man. The I time you, you guys, he, he, was, he was downloading so what much into me. What a heart you have, brother. And power yeah. into me. And now when I look back, I learned a lot in there. I've learned so much here in the year's time. God has just, um, in fact, it was uh, t told to me that God is accelerating very fast into you. Download, he's going to be downloading things into me very fast, you know, like somebody pulling back a slingshot and letting it go. You're going to be shot out yeah, yeah. into your, and, yeah. and, and, and I have been. And, it, and I can only say this. I'm nobody special. God doesn't take any favors. It's my faith it's my my knowing that i have to stay plugged in no yes, matter what even right. when it tells me i don't I, you know you don't want to get up and go or something one morning no i've got to first come first seek ye the kingdom of god that's right and everything else will be added that's on right. you that's and right. it was with me i'm no longer homeless here's my situation right now today as i sit here i i have a job i don't pay rent at where i live because where I live, I, I'm a handyman type guy. I've done a lot. You earn of, it. You earn yes. your rent. Yeah. I earn my rent. It's paid for. Plus, I make money, and I'm able to. This setup allows me to stay in close to the Lord. I get to. I, I, I come here Monday, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Monday, Monday for men's men's fellowship and uh, at night. Uh, Tuesday Tuesday morning prayer. Uh, Wednesday night prayer, and Thursday the food ministry. And it's so funny that the Lord gave me this job because I remember the day I prayed for the Lord, I need a job, but I need one that will allow me to stay plugged into the church and the Believer's Church. <laughs> right. And I, it's, it, that's so, it sounds impossible, but it is happening to me right now yeah, yeah, as yeah. I speak. And I'm able to help actually other people sure. a little bit and, and, and stay plugged in because I know me. Nothing's impossible for Nothing God. Nothing is impossible Nothing for God. Nothing is impossible. Amen. And so now we're caught up to me to where I'm at now. And all I can say is I have been healed. I don't have a drug addiction like I used to. That was taken away, by the way. I, 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 I pray no, that away. That's deliverance, brother. And then now, it's amazing. I, lately, just recently, I prayed for my family, my family to come back. And I prayed the healing process to begin. Sure, sure. Because now my heart healed. I'm getting stronger. I, I know I will never go back to my old ways. I know that I know that I know because yeah. God has taken that Doesn't away. Doesn't that feel good? Oh, man. And it, it didn't take, you know, it hasn't been all that long, you know. I, um, the old Brian would only take, man, I can, I, I can only remember staying sober for hmm, maybe a year at a time or two years. That was all I had in me with yeah, another, all my own strength. Uh, another 10 years and you'll feel like you never used. I know. It's just time heals wounds, you know. Oh, man, it's but been it, amazing. And it, it's powerful because uh, what you're saying, I, I finally get to really know you better, and know yes. your history, know your past. And, yeah. And, um, and it, it, it's amazing to me. Um, to watch when we, when we get to listen to a testimony as yours or, or anybody else's that you get to see how the Lord was woven in through their testimony yes. even when you didn't even realize that he was there Amen. all that time Amen. and you know I, I think everyone is born every human being was, was born to have a life like Adam and Eve did before they fell Yes. and so and so for all of us, whether there's some people that never experience those types of things, never end up in a jail or anything like that, but, but they have their own issues. Yes. They're different, but they have their own issues. Their own issues. And it's a, what it is, it's a, there's two kinds of jails. 
Yes. Uh, one jail the enemy keeps you in, keeps yes. you locked up in. Yes. And the only way you can get out of that jail is when Jesus sets you free from it. Amen. You, delivers you from your addiction. Yes. You know, only, only Christ can do that. Amen. I mean, I, I love the fact that we have uh, counselors. I love the fact that we have different people that and can they help. Work. They do. They yeah. do help. They do help. But when it comes to real deliverance, yes. only the power only, of Christ can do that. I, I'm and, a firm believer. And and that's when, true. You were, when you were talking earlier about your, uh, when you were talking about your sister and, um, and the cancer situation, um, I, heard, I heard two names, and I think it's, I think it's going to end up being Janice, but I heard Janet, and then I heard Janice right after it. Did you? No. And what I sensed about Janet or Janice, um, and I don't know if that means that, 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 I just, that I didn't hear right in the beginning and it's supposed to be Janice, or if that Janet and Janice know each other. I'm not sure what the situation is. I've been asking the Lord. But I sense that, that what has happened to you, Janet, Janice, or both of you, is that you found yourself in that same situation. You're either in or now, or you already have been oh, in amen. it. Amen. Where, where, where you're just asking to live instead of asking to be healed. Oh. And so what happens is, is we get imprisoned within our own mind and our own body. When yes. We're under a heavy attack like cancer and mm. chemo and going through those ugly issues. It's real difficult to keep a strong faith mm -hmm. and a strong belief because and we even sometimes get to the point to where we begin to question God. That's right. But I'm, what I'm here to tell you, Janet or Janice or both of you, what I'm here to say to you is this is you can get that kind of strength within you to have the faith that it takes to believe God to heal you. Amen. You don't have yes. to allow you don't have to allow that prison that you're in of, of sickness and disease. You don't have to allow that to continue to keep you bound up because mm -hmm. Jesus Christ paid the price to set the captives free. That's right. And when Amen. he sets you free, he sets you free from everything. Mm -hmm. You still got to walk through it with him. That's right. But the point being is that from that time on, you can start to begin to be at peace with it because you know your God's going to bring you through it. See? That's right. That's the kind of faith we're talking about. We're not talking about having some kind of weird faith, just a faith in that God, yes. the God that nothing is impossible, can bring us out and from any situation. He can take us through any catastrophe or disaster, and we can come out on the other side yes. and look back at it and go, yeah, that was God. Yes. Amen. Yeah, he did do that. Yes. yes, he didn't leave me or forsake me. See? That's right. Because it's not about what we go through. See, what happens is, is, is the enemy yes. wants to drag us through life and imprison us in our lifestyle, which you talked about. You wish yes. your whole witness was about that, right? Yes. And so he does it to everybody that allow him to do it because yes. we just don't know how to fight. Right. Some That's so people... True just naturally just walk right into that kind of faith and they walk through the things of life yes. and they never find themselves getting trapped or caught up in a yes. in a prison cell that they can't get out of. That's right. But when Jesus came to set the captives free, that means that whatever prison that you're in, he wants to bring you out of that prison and he yes. wants you to bring you into his kingdom, <clears throat> which is a whole different type of prison because it's a glorious prison. See? That's right. See, there's Amen. two prisons. You're either in the prison of the enemy or you're in the prison of your God. Yes. And so, and so it's a matter of learning. It's a matter of allowing God. It's a matter of the, taking a, a shift, you know, yes, which God is. is in that time. Those winds of change are happening right yes. now where he's wanting to shift people mm -hmm. from feeling like they're under the barrel That's right. to flipping them over on top of the barrel right. where they can stand on top of the barrel and proclaim the goodness of God. Right. They can proclaim and they can see and begin to sing. Look what the Lord has done. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Because it's all about glorifying God. Our lives are here to be a praise, to be a worship, That's to be right. an act of love unto God. That's right. So that we can love ourselves and love the world. Yeah. But see, as long as we're under the barrel and we're not able to see the light of Christ, we're not able to come out of that prison, the enemy's got us trapped in there. He and does. everybody looks at us and goes, well, where's your God? That's right. You don't see him in, in the midst of your struggle. And as a matter of fact, you may not even see him in the midst of your struggle, but he's there. Yes. He's there. He's just waiting for permission yep. to give you the key so you can unlock the door and get out of that jail cell. Mm -hmm. you Praise know, God. I remember something, Ron. You sure, know, brother. As, as I was going, you know, um, before I got arrested, there was, there was godly people that would come to talk to me. And, you know, trying to, you know God was trying to reach out and get me Amen. before I, I, he knew the level I was going to take it to, but he was trying to save me 
off and on in my life. Mm -hmm. There was, there was, but I kept rejecting. I kept, I would go on for a little while, but I would, I can't do that because then I can't do what I want. You know, I can't do this right now. Yeah. But you know, I love you and everything. But no, I can't go to your church. I would back. There's some. I backed away. That but I do love. remember. Yeah. <laughs> I remember one time. I th it might have been an angel, but I remember. <laughs> Probably I was hitchhiking, and I and I and and uh, this this uh, this guy picked me up, and. He says, you need a ride? And I said, yeah, I need a ride. I was on my way to get some some, some dope or something. I don't remember. I, I just knew I needed to get there, and, and I was hurting, and I needed some, right? And he says, man, uh, you all right? And I said, I'll be all right. I just got to gotta get down here, and I, you know, I've got things to do there, and I got you know, to get here quick as soon as I can, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. And this guy looked at me and said, no, you don't. I went, whoa, geez, here we go. This is not good. And he says, you know, Brian, uh, he didn't, he didn't, we, we'd already introduced ourselves. He says, you know, Brian, you need to, you need to, to really carefully look and, and look at what you're doing. You're, you're going to destroy parts of your life. And I did. I, and I, but I sure. remember it was a warning. And, and if I could have, if I could have grabbed on it, of course the Lord knew I wasn't going to, you know, well, he was, he, he if you are, 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 are are smart enough or are able and some a, a holy person comes to you they're sent by God it's no it, this was a divine moment I'll never forget it but I rejected it I just wasn't ready I, I remember that and this person whether it be a man to this day I'm not sure or an angel dropped me off in the car just but those words stuck with me no, you don't need to do this. You, you know, you, you want to, you know, and I remember him talking yeah. about the flesh. I just, yeah. he was, he was a godly person and he was telling yeah. me about Jesus and I'm going, I'm, I'm shaking it off. I just remember, wow, I couldn't, I couldn't re wait to get out of there. Yeah. It was so crazy. Yeah. And then there was another time. Well, it was after uh, I was real sick and somebody came and prayed to me. And I'm going, what was that about? That was amazing. You know, I remember feeling the presence of God a few times in my life. So he was always in and out of my life, you know, but it, I just kept rejecting it. And Satan was trying to keep my eyes and mm -hmm. well, did keep my eyes away from him That's for many right. years. That's right. And now when I look back, whew, you know, he is here and it is real and he is here to to destroy people's lives. That's right. He and hates, one of the biggest ones us. is is drugs. And, he hates and, all of God's creation. He does. Yeah. And it's very it all, powerful. Every bit of it. Yes. Every yes. Every bit of and it. And if he can, if he can use the, you know, your family and, and get in there and start tearing it apart, because right. then he knows he's got you down. He uses people like care. tools. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You know, he, he comes to kill and steal kill and, and destroy. destroy. See, and if there's to. any stealing, killing, or destroying going on in our life, that's not God. Yes. That's not our God of love. That is the enemy. See, and what we have to learn to do in our life is to decipher between yes. who's who in our life. Yes. Um, if you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, it's very difficult to understand who God is going to be in your life because you're, you're not spiritually alive to know the difference. See, and, and if we're trying to judge everything out of our mental mind and our soul, right. we're always going to come up a little bit short because our minds are nowhere near the mind of God. That's right. And, and, but the enemy is slick enough uh, you know that he'll if we allow him to run us around ragged That's right. if we allow him to you know if we run into that prison willfully run in there even though God may be trying to snatch you out but you're saying no no I don't want to go yet I still want to you know like the prodigal son he had to run his course all the way down to the hog Amen. pen before he finally realized that okay God I'll go home you know yeah. yes. and so and so we all run that 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 Walk that walk and run that race the way that we do it. But the point is, what happens is that Satan loves to get you in that prison where you have no way out. And yeah. God allows you to go there because he knows that's when you're going to get real with him and say, Okay, God, yes. I need some keys here. Yes. I, I got to get out of this, man. Yes. I don't know how to do it. I thought I had it all together, and mm -hmm. I don't. Mm -hmm. You can be imprisoned in so, all of us in so many different ways. Yes. You know, it can, it can come through mental things, physical things, spiritual things. Yes, you know, can. however the enemy can come in, he's going to come in. Wherever we open up to him, he'll mm -hmm. come in and he wants to take over and he wants to control. Yes. That control has to be broken off. And the only way to break that off is with the name and the authority of the name and the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. You have to believe that his blood 
was powerful enough to destroy all the works of sin and Amen. death of the grave. Amen. See, and when a person believes that, when they're honest with themselves and they realize that they can't do everything on their own, that they have no ability to really change their lives and become the person that they might not even have recognized all their life that God wanted them to be, mm -hmm. then you surrender your life. Yes, amen. See, and, and that's just the beginning, though. When we surrender our life to Christ, it, that from that point now, the work really begins. It does. Because if you amen. spent years, if you spent decades in the world, if you spent decades in the prison of Satan, then on all of a sudden now you're coming out and you've got all this garbage that you're dragging with you. You've got all this residue that's going to come with you. And mm -hmm. that's where the Lord wants to walk us through. That's where the Lord wants to walk us out of those things. Amen. He wants us to be healed. He wants us to be prosperous in His kingdom. He wants to be prosperous in His ways. He wants us to learn this whole new kingdom that we knew nothing about. <laughs> and it takes time. And that's it. And it right takes there. work. Amen. And it takes prayer. It does. And it takes worship. It and it takes studying the word. It takes lending our mind over to the things of God and not this world. It's a trade-off. It's a trade-off. If you're going to come out of the world, you've got to come out of it, praise God. That's right. you got to live in it. But how are we going to live in it is the question. Right. Are we going to live in it as the old person or are we going to live in it as the as new, new person, person and develop that in our life? Right. And, and, and so what I'm, what I'm saying tonight, Janice... <laughs> What Amen. I'm saying tonight, tonight Janice, you've got to make that decision That's right. in your life. You do. You have to surrender your life to Christ. I, no matter how much of a mess your life is, and no matter if nobody likes you and everybody hates you, That's right. God loves you. Yes, He does. He cares about you <clears throat> enough to call you out, to call you into His kingdom. Yes. And Janet, if that's you suffering from cancer, he wants to call you out of that. He wants you Amen. to be a testimony. Amen. He wants you to be a witness and he wants you to be a praise that's unto right. him. So that when your life is changed, when your life is healed, and when your life is set free, that he can put you in the mission field to go out Amen. and help others be free from their cancer that's and their right. sickness and their disease. See, God brings us out of things and he sends us right back into it. That's right. But when he sends us back in, we are equipped. <laughs> we're ready to go back in the mission field. We're ready to go in and, and destroy the works of the enemy and build the kingdom of God. Amen. And you're going to love it. Oh, my goodness. You're going to love it. Is it good, brother? Oh, my goodness. It is amazing. It's amazing what God does. And, and, it's, and, it's, and it's truly changing you from the inside out. That's right. And because you're, you're, you're renewed, you're a new person, you're a new creation, you know, and there's also, there's the, along the way as you're learning, you know, like not leaning on your own understanding and, 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 and as God builds you up and prepares you, you'll see you, and you'll know because he'll speak to you personally. He'll, he'll, he'll repair your family. He's doing that with me right now. It, it's amazing. It, and in every area of your life, he changes and he, he'll meet you there. And as long as you keep praying to him and you stay faithful, Whatever comes up now, I don't have any problems. Not only now, I have little situations that will come up now. Yeah, yeah. And I pray about them. I yeah. don't have, uh, recently now, I don't even have doubt. I don't even have, you know, it's just I, now that I know how you know powerful, that you know that I know you that know. I know. Yeah. And, I've, and I've been in situations, life or death, I've been in, you know, health situations now. And I keep praying to the Lord. And I know the Lord can do any, our, see, in our mind, things become bigger than they really are. There, there's little <laughs> things to the Lord. Yeah, that's right. And He's waiting for you to trust in Him and to look up and say, Lord, I think I need some help here. Come on, tell the truth. And so, now, so as soon as you start understanding this, and, and instead of, He wants you to run to Him, not from Him, and instead of looking at, and thinking and, and leaning on our own understanding, when you start looking to Him and getting sharpened from your brothers mm -hmm. and being around other people that you need to be and you mm -hmm. need to stay plugged in again, by the way, but you were around those people, it shifts. Your problems are only, they're, they're little pity little things. And yeah. they're, then all of a sudden, they're gone. Yeah. And the Lord can take them away. He just needs you to lean and pray about it. And He needs you to trust in Him and so He can heal you and that He can, he can change you and you and everybody.
you know, that you're praying for and around. And he, he can start doing his miracles. Yeah. And so as you, as you get stronger and closer to the Lord, he's able to give you more and more. He's sure, able to trust sure, you with more sure, and more. Sure, sure. And I'm starting to see that. Yeah. And now I'm asking for more. My prayers have changed. My, my attitude has changed. Yeah, my, yeah. My, I have a heart for people. Now, you know, you know, my mind's not the same. You know, it's, I still, I still, I'm still a little bit folk, you know, I, I still want to look at the past a little bit sometimes or I'll still get caught up in that and I immediately stop it now with the Lord yeah, helping sure, me. Sure, sure. But I catch myself and I'll be, no, 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 that's wrong thinking. Yeah, and, well, when he, says that, when he says that he forgives it and forgets it and it's, knows it no more, far, yes. yeah, he expects us to do the same he, thing. Yes, he but expects But the problem us. of it is, is we begin to beat ourselves up. That's it. Yeah, and then we start using our tongue. That's it. You know, the tongue is a can set a fire ablaze. No, it man. does. It, yes. And so, and so we, if we don't have that understanding or that revelation about our words, what Amen. comes out of our mouth, That's right. we don't understand many times that we're sowing seeds, you know? And, yes. And Mark 4 and Luke 8 and Matthew 13 talk about a seed Amen. sower, and it says That's the right. seed is the word. That's right. And so everything on this earth comes from a seed, praise God. Praise God. Amen. And I don't understand... I don't understand how it is that that concept seems to be lost right. in a lot of believers' That's lives. Right. But everything comes from a seed. You sow seed and you reap. That's what God said. You give and it'll be yes. given unto you. And, you know, it just goes on and on all through the Bible about Praise sowing God. and reaping. Yes. And so, and so the harvest that we speak with our mouth, and, 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 and I know many people don't grasp this. They don't want to believe it because they don't think they have any power in their words. But if, if you are born again, if the Holy Spirit lives inside of you, every word that you say has power in it. Yes, it does. Amen. You don't have to feel it to know Amen. it does. That's you just right. have to believe that when God says it does, it does. And it, yes, it does. And so if we don't want to set our course on hell, we've got to speak and say what God says about the situation. That's right. doesn't matter how you feel. doesn't matter what it looks like. A person that walks by faith doesn't walk by sight. That's right. A person that walks by faith trusts God. That you, when you speak and sow his word into a situation, in other words, if you want healing, you've got to take the healing scriptures and talk about that. Yes. You don't only convince your own mind and heart, but you're sowing those seeds out. And sooner or later, you're going to reap that harvest. Yes. If you'll stay Amen. faithful. Yes. If you'll stick with it Amen. and begin to lack the doubt. Doubt has to be destroyed. How did Pastor Tommy Terry say it? I wish I could. If I remember that, I'll say it. Yes. But he said it in such a great way. Make sure you starve doubt completely out. That's what he said. There it is. Starve you know what I mean? doubt completely out. You've got to build out. faith <laughs> and starve your doubt out. Thank yes. you, Pastor Amen. Tom Terry. Wild man from Wisconsin. See, that's right. And, and, and boy, I'm telling you, the more doubt that we can starve out, the more things that we'll see happen, thus saith the Lord, in our life, that's in this right. world. This world is in the shape that it's in because... There isn't anybody out there, or I shouldn't say anybody, forgive me. There's not <laughs> enough of us out there fighting right. the good fight of faith That's right. and confessing what the Lord says. Amen. There's not enough of us that are really serious enough to do like you're talking about, Brian, and spend that time to hear from the Lord so we know what to pray and what to say, praise yes. God. Because we can say all kinds of stuff. We can come up with all kinds of ideas. But when we say exactly what the Lord once said, there is a purpose and there's a plan and there's a timing behind it, praise God. Yes, amen. And it will come to pass because He said His word yes. will not go out and return back void, praise amen. God. Amen. I think I might preach tonight. I Hallelujah. think you are <laughs> preaching tonight. Amen. <laughs> wow. I think yeah. you are. And Hallelujah. I know this is no new message, but it's the greatest message yes. that the Lord has ever given to us. Yes. The power of confession. The, power of, the confession. power of belief. Amen. The power of faith behind our words, praise Amen. God. That's what changes the course of things in life. Hallelujah. Yes. You know, and so if God didn't want us to do that, he wouldn't have given us the power to do it. Brother. No, he wouldn't have. You know what I mean? And, you know, I've seen amazing things. I've seen people healed now, and I've gotten to pray for people. And it's so amazing because at the right time, you know, I was praying under my breath the other day. Uh, somebody came in to the uh, food ministry, and the Lord gives me, the Holy Spirit will give you, the, if you're sensitive and you have that ear to hear, and you have, and you have, and you have the eyes to see and the ears to hear. Yeah, I'm telling you, yeah. the Lord downloads to you the, with the Holy Spirit. He downloads the, the 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 prayer, and you see it's so amazing. You know, I I, I love that it, when you see their eyes light up, their spirit person inside of them, their spirit, you know, their lights up. 
because they hear the, yeah. the, the love of God. That's right. And when, when you deliver a prayer like that to somebody, when, when you speak into somebody's life, when you speak the word of life, yeah. you were talking That's about right. what we word speak, life, right. sowing yeah. seed. We, when you speak that into someone's heart and into their, 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 their ears perk up, their, their whole body Praise rises Praise God. Up. That's right. And you can see that change. And, you know, it might not, they might not even know it, but it's the Lord and the working That's right. It. That's right. Doesn't matter we're, we're if they know it or not. Amen. They're receiving it. And that's the amazing yeah. part to me. It's the amazing. anointing is on God's word. Yes. The anointing the breaks word. the yoke. The yes. anointing is on God's yes. word. Yes. And so when we're praying from the heart of God, what he wants prayed into a situation, oh, the anointing on it is going to do it's exactly do what situation. it's called to do. Praise right, God. God. Yes. That, Hallelujah. That, that's how God set it up. That's, that's the way he said it works. And, yes. and so being obedient people of God, we do what he says to do. See, Amen. something the Lord shared with me recently. I'm going to go ahead and release this here tonight. The prayers that we pray can no longer come from our mind. The prayers that everybody prays, it just comes from their mind and their soul of what they think. Even to the point of saying, well, God, whatever your will is. You must know what the will of God is for the situation before yes. you pray for Amen. it. Amen. See, I know this sounds kind of crazy to some people. But God wants permission to move into situations. Yes. He, he doesn't want to push his way in. He doesn't want to make you pray something. He wants you to have the heart of it yourself so that you can pray it out. And he'll move in the situation because we want him to move in the situation. Amen. And so when we hear from God the will of God, when the Holy Spirit reveals things to us and it groans inside of us and we pray, thus saith the Lord, in the situations, God has the permission to do exactly what He knows He wants to do, how He's going to do it. That's but right. it comes from His Word. And His Word and the Spirit together produce power, power. Yeah. in the name Amen. of Christ. Yes, it does. Power, power. I'm power. telling you. Yes, it does. And so when, when the Word is in us, the Holy Spirit, right? The Spirit mixes with that Word together. We have the power of Holy Spirit. We have the power of Christ. At the same time, God moves in that power. Amen. Amen. And things happen. Amen. And I'm not going to say that it happens every time, all the time. But I'm telling you, without those kinds of prayers, things just don't happen. No. You know, if we, don't know, if we don't know what the will of God is for a particular situation, that's when we've got to spend that quiet time and hear yes. from the Lord, okay, what, what do you want me to say in this, Lord? Right. I don't want to manufacture something out of my soul because I'm in pain for this person or I'm yes. having compassion or anything mm -hmm. like that. I want to pray what you want done. That's right. Maybe the Lord wants us to say something that has nothing to do with what we're thinking that we want to pray about because there's an issue that's got to be dealt with before they can be healed or delivered or set free. Yes. See? Salvation comes. Salvation is free. Why doesn't everybody receive it? Well, maybe there's some issues with how we're approaching them. Amen. We need to get that right with the Lord. That's right. Walking in the Spirit <clears throat> means we're hearing from God. He's downloading into us and we're releasing it back out Amen. into the earth, into people's lives. See, That's right. there's a, so much more done when it's operating that way than when Amen. it's something that we're just trying to do on our own. Yes. If you don't have any idea what to pray about, hush your mouth. Yes. And listen. And, and that is so I'm true. serious. Hush your mouth. Yeah. Just that listen. So don't true. say a word. Yes. Because we don't want to be sowing negative things or wrong things into no. a situation where God's wanting to move and he can't move in the negative. He can't That's move right. in the ugly. He moves in his word. That's right. See? And it destroys the ugly and it destroys the evil. Amen. But you know, it's just like just like you gotta give Satan permission into your life, you gotta give God. Yes. He Amen. won't force his way in. Amen. He that's won't force his way into any situation unless he's prayed in right. or asked in that's or invited right. in right. that I know of anyway. That's right. And, and you I know, know Ron, also now I have, um, I have the ability to speak to people that have been incarcerated and locked up. I have ability to speak to the people that are still suffering with drugs. <clears throat> and I've talked to several people just in here and there out on the streets. I, you know, like I said, I'm involved in different food ministries and I go out and feed the homeless and I, there's just different situations. And I always find myself praying for somebody and, and, and I have the, the, the knowledge because now I, I've lived it. I've done it. I mean, trust and believe me, I'm 50 years old. I've done, I've been in there and I've done a lot of things, different things. And I, and I can see basically the Lord will show you 
And it's not really reading their mail, but I know where they're at. And I've, I can tell by where they're at. So when you're praying into them, you, you can so, you, you can tell them, you know, with, with, a, with a clear, with a, with a right heart and with a God lived experience and God, God working in you and, and speaking to you. Because, like you said, when yeah. you're quiet and yeah. you're still right into their situation and they're like, wow. And, you know, and I can really relate to a lot of heartache. Because of the, what I've been delivered sure, from, yeah. you know, I the pain and stuff, I can yeah. relate to it. So yeah. when I when I pray for people, it, it's so amazing, and it, it's amazing to see them and let them know, hey, I know exactly what you're feeling. Yeah. I've been there. Yeah. I, you've got to believe me. I, I've experienced death. Yeah. I've experienced these these, these things, mm -hmm. and God has delivered me from it. And just saying, just that is 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 very powerful to people. Sure, sure. And you know, and. Everybody that knows me, you guys know me for a year now, but the people that are that are getting ready to know me, because I, like I said, I stayed away from them. Yeah. I'm getting ready to go back, you know, and start started meeting some of them. And now I'm able to, you know, yeah. because I, I won't get drawn back to the drugs and things, but sure. I can't wait to see a lot of them. And, and I'm a completely a changed person. And so now when I see them, they're going to be like, wow, you're yeah. not the same... <laughs> Something what happened, happened to you. What happened to you? What yeah. happened to this old yeah. Brian? You know, right. You're not That's like right. you're not the same, are you? <laughs> yeah. And uh, there was one person that came down to our food ministry one time, an Indian gal from up in the mountains. Uh -huh. and she said, "Brian, is that you? How, how are you doing?" She said, "I barely recognize you. You're, you look really well. You look you look like you're doing really good." And I had a big old smile on my face. I went, "Wow." I, I am doing really good. Yeah, and I, yeah. I, you know, I, I go. I attend this church, and um, I said, you know, I started talking to her about the Lord a little bit. I, she says, yeah, a little bit. You know, I could, you know, I, I end up giving her some money for the bus and stuff to get back up the mountain. But, mm -hmm. you know, that was the only person I have seen since all the people that I've, I've known and and um in a long time. So yeah. I can't. I actually yeah. can't wait to go back and see some of them yeah. now pretty soon. And yeah. I know the Lord's going to. You know, I I know in my spirit that it feels right now to go back. And, and, and up there because I'm strong now. See, the Lord, the, this whole time was for to rebuild me, and He's down. He's been rebuilding right. me. And and you, and if you're sincere, and if you if you pray to the Lord, the Lord will meet you right where you right, right where you're at. That's right. He'll change you from the inside out. That's right. He'll 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 take your brokenness. He'll he'll break all the chains. He'll take that brokenness and completely turn it in, around where where you're at peace. And now I have love. I'm re I, I'm restored. I, I'm ready to go to to get back into society a lot better, you know. And 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 it is. It's it's not it's not that it's been a slow uh, thing. It's only been in one year for me. And I'm I'm back to where I should be. And and it's so amazing that the Lord is 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 setting me up for for new things. I can already feel them coming. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's so amazing. And it's they a lot of times they don't surprise me no more because the Lord is so gracious and He wants to bless us, and He just blessed me the other day. You know, He blesses me left and left and right, and and as long as I stay in tune and faithful to Him, mm -hmm. all my needs are all all my needs are met. Praise God! And, and it's, it's so amazing. It's what so He promised, I'm, though? Yes, exactly yeah. what He yeah. promises, yeah. and He's and He's always on time. And he's uh, he's he's you know he's he's restoring every part in my life, and he's and I know that I have a future, and I have a hope, and and it's so amazing, and I know I can almost see the outcome, you know, of, of not that I can see it, but he's he's revealed to me as long as I stay on the right uh, on this path on this on on this road where my journey is going to end, and it's amazing. Yeah. It's heaven heaven here on earth. It's, yeah, it's amazing. come on. My family is restored because I'm 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 speaking that right now. My yeah. family was torn apart. It, it's restored. I've I have my heart's desires. My you know my house my whatever. I already yeah. know this, so yeah. I can already say it. Now is that that's no doubt. Yeah. You're talking about that's that, right. no doubt, right? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so that's I see right. I see um, people's lives changed now for them. I speak it. You know that's that's the beginning of faith. Yeah. And then the faith is working yeah. in me now. Yeah. I never seen things like that. Now, instead of that 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 destruction that I used to see and death and just badness, yeah, I, now I see yeah, yeah. life and I see goodness and I see me. I, I can tell you, I see me in another year um, owning my own my own house. It just it's amazing. I, I see me moving forward, not behind, not yeah. going backwards. Yeah. And I see amazing things, and I and I have a knowing of it now. 
And it's just amazing. Isn't that amazing? Oh. I, 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 I can't wait. I just, I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. I didn't <laughs> and and more, more so, I'm excited to go back up and get a hold of some of these people and, and let them know where I'm at and, mm-hmm. and show them and bring them to the Lord. That's on my heart yes. to do. I want to literally go seek a lot of them pretty soon here and, right, and go, go tell them about the Lord. Yeah, and that's amen. another thing you'll find yourself doing, wanting to help people. That's right, yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're really much is given, change. much is required, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, the Lord, it, it, when the Lord gets that good, He just can't help it. No. Yeah. You can't. He just can't you help. Can. You got to share. You got to share. You know. Okay. Yes. You yeah. have to. You have to go out there and help people. You know that. You know, even whether they think they have it all together or not, no. the point is, you still need Jesus, no matter where you're at in life. No. Yeah. You could have everything that you ever wanted in this world. You still need the Lord. You That's still right. need the Lord. Amen. Right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That is right. That's right. That's right. 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 Yes, yeah, he's so amazing. Yeah. There, there is no doubt. And and there are there are people I can almost picture him now that that if well praise God if they're with the Lord now that would be awesome. I mean if they're serving Him now. But yeah. I, I just know in my heart that I, I have a lot of people to go search out and find and yeah. let them know what the Lord has done for me and my testimony alone on them. And they used to know me back when they when I was doing uh, all my party and stuff. And now when they see me, it's going to be amazing. Yeah. So I can't wait. Yeah. I yeah. really can't. Yeah. Yeah. It'll so be interesting. It'll I be very. You, I can tell you that much. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. It, it, it will be, be interesting. interesting. <laughs> yeah. It'll be very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I so. can remember one specific incident when I went back to tell some of my friends, you know, this years ago, right? Yeah. <laughs> and they said, uh, one of them said to me, Man, what happened to you? Did you smoke too much KJ? Or <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Right. <laughs> right. Because right. I couldn't help it. I got to talk about Jesus to everybody. Yeah, to everybody. I got right. the answer, man. You guys, I, look, I, I don't need that no more, man. I got the end, you know, but That's right. they weren't ready for that yet. That's right. But I went back anyway. I didn't care. Yeah. You know, I'd go again. Yeah. And I tell some people my story, you know, uh, uh, my testimony and this and that, and they look at you, and they, Brian, are you, sh- you were that way, are you sure, you're, you're, my, I, you don't seem that way, yeah, you know, and, yeah. and I'm, I'm not, yeah. I, my intentions weren't that way, That's it's, right. you know, the devil, That's once right. you, once you, once you are, you know, deceived by the, by the devil, he can take you for a ride. Yeah. Yeah. He's no joke. Well, the problem is, is when we deceive ourselves. He we comes deceive to ourselves. deceive. We oh, yes. receive it, yes. and then we start deceiving ourselves. And we carry that. I know how to lie to myself really good. Oh, my goodness. I can convince myself into all kinds of things. Yes. Okay. And that's right. And I think he'll just whisper, whisper little things in your ear or something. He, he'll get you going the that's wrong right. way. And then we take it and we run with it. And then you justify it. And you believe it. And yeah. it's a lie. Yeah. And the end is death. That's right. And, and you know, he, like Ron said, he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. That's what he does. That's right. And that's all he does. He stole my. He, he, can't he do stole part else. of my family away. Yeah. He, he, he destroyed my my life up to a point, and he almost destroyed me. He almost fully got me. Yeah. He, I came yeah. close. Like I said, I, I was in that jail cell, getting ready to snuff myself out. Yeah. And I thought it was the end. Well, when I you gave OD'd up twice too. I mean, there was right. several times. Yes, an OD. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Praise and I'll God find we, out when I get to heaven how many times I was really saved. Yeah. Because there was those probably almost. A million. Yes. <laughs> driving down the road, you know, the yeah. almost accidents. Oh, yeah. that was a close one. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. or I almost got shot twice. I you know, didn't even put that in there. But yeah. 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 Just there's man. It goes on and on and on. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It does. And it's it's not you know it's it's so amazing now that I look back that it was it it almost seems unreal. You know, God has, has, has changed my heart so much. The, my past is almost unreal to me. It's like, wow, uh, what did I do that? You know, yeah, what happened? Yeah. Well, the yeah. more you understand it, as time goes on, you start to understand really what you were involved in. Yeah. You know, because because when we're living the life, things just kind of fly by. And we just, we're, trying, we're in survival mode every day, you know. Oh, yeah. And once you get out of that to where you're living life, actually really living yes. life, right, in Christ, then all of a sudden you start to realize that, man, wow, man, all that I went through, all that yes. I did, the Lord saved me from every bit of Amen. it. Amen. You know, and it, it just gets better. You get, we become more thankful and more thankful all the time. I do. I know, really am. Do, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, praise God. Oh, man. I well, the Lord. this has been quite an awesome night. Yes, it has. It love has. you, brother. Thank you so much. Oh, love you too, brother. And, uh, <laughs> God bless, man. God bless. Love you too, brother. Yeah. So uh, we're... Let's just uh, let's just pray out tonight for the people and uh, pray what's in our hearts, whatever the Lord gives you, and uh, and we'll we'll say good night. Praise God. All right. Hallelujah. 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 Sure. Thank we you. pray.
Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, Heavenly Father, yes. Lord God, I just thank you, Father God, what you've done personally in my life, Father God. I thank you, Lord God, I, I, uh, for, for what you are, are going to do in my life, Father. But most of all, Lord God, I thank you for that, that, that night you saved me. I'll never forget it. And, and, and I'm still walking in, in your truth, Father, and I'm still serving you, Father God, and, and with all my heart. And, and I'm seeing people's lives change around me now, Lord. I, I'm just, I'm blessed. I, you're blessing me left and right, Father, and I thank you so much for that. I thank you, Lord God, that I, I here I am now. I'm, I'm in a church. <laughs> I'm sitting here. I give my testimony. It, it's just been so amazing, Lord God. I, and, and, you know, you were always with me along the way. You'll never forsake me. You'll never leave me. I just thank you for all this. I'm so yeah. thankful. You're so amazing to me. And Lord, I, I know you have you have uh, many 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 much more for me to uh, that's coming along and, and coming up. Lord God, I just pray. Wow, I just pray that I, I'm I'm able to be a witness uh, for you in a mighty way. That I'm able to reach many many people. And 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 I pray for them, Father God. I, I just I just pray that that m that the doors are open, Father God, and that I have many divine appointments. You know uh, that I can that I can change help change people uh, with your words with with yeah. your living word, Father. I just thank you so much, though. Uh, you know it's like Ron said. You know it, it, it you are so amazing. And you know, I'm going to tear up again here. <laughs> yeah. I, you know I I'm, I am so grateful. But I I pray for 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 the ones that are locked up right now. You know I I pray that you stay dedicated and that you get you, you get plugged into a church wherever you're at. And you don't give up. You just meet the Lord and, and just talk to Him. And I, I mean, He will set you free. I, he really will. He set me free. Here I'm out. I'm 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 back out in in, in the world, but I'm not um, of the world anymore. You know what? It's I've left the world behind. I've died to it. I'm alive in the Lord now, and I'm telling you, it the life is unbelievable. It's it's truly amazing. And uh, my prayer tonight is for people to grasp a hold of that, yes. and to really, to really see and to and to ask the Lord to come to their heart. You know, if you don't know Him, yes. just ask Him. You know, to come into your heart uh, and show Him your situation. Be honest with Him and tell Him. And uh, man, if that's you out there tonight, I pray that you uh, you do that right now. You know, wherever you're at, um, especially if you're locked up. Yes. I'm telling you, He can uh, He can He can break the chains. He can. Uh, you tell him how much time you can do, <laughs> and he uh, he will he'll answer your prayers. You know you got to just trust and believe it without no doubt. Now you know don't doubt, and he'll change your life. And I pray that for everybody that's watching that this uh, program right now. And yeah. I pray that uh, with all my heart that you just listen to the Lord, and you surrender. You got to surrender your life to Him, and lean not on your own understanding. You just surrender. And he will change your life. And uh, he's real. The devil's real. Don't don't be fooled. And um, if you seek Jesus, and you meet him halfway, he he there they'll there he he will come to you, and he will change your life. That's all I know. Yeah. And uh, it's been amazing. Thank you. Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray this, yeah. and Thank I uh, Thank pray you, it over anybody that's listening to this. Yeah. Thank and, uh, you, Jesus. Thank Father, you, Lord. Just thank you tonight, Father, for um, the power of your word and the power of your spirit, Lord God. Um, uh, I'm asking you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Father. There's so many needs out there um, in the world, and especially for our, our listeners and for those that are going to listen to this in the future. And so mm -hmm. I'm asking you, Father, to release your kingdom from heaven into the earth, Lord God. And that would you meet every need according to your riches and glory in mm -hmm. Christ Jesus, Father. And for those, Father, that are struggling, would you strengthen them, Lord God. For those that are confused, would you break that confusion off of their minds yes, and their Lord. souls Hallelujah. in the name of Jesus Christ, Father. Yes. Would the windows of heaven open out and pour out such blessing, your spirit upon this earth, Lord God. Thank you, Father, for your love. Thank you, Father, that there is healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, for there is salvation in the power of your blood sacrifice, Lord God. And we release that into the airways tonight, Lord God. 
and we say that you are the God that nothing is impossible. What's impossible for us tonight is not for you. That's so right. we are asking Amen. you, Father, by the surrender of our heart today, by the surrender of our lives to you tonight, Father, we are asking you to have your way. We're asking that your perfect kingdom would come and that your perfect will would be done in and through our lives this day in Jesus' name, Father. Amen. And we're going to thank you. We're going to enter your gates with thanksgiving right now and come into your course with praise because you are great and you are mighty and you are awesome and there is none like you. So we call upon you the one, the true, and the only God, the creator of heaven and earth. And we praise you, Father, for giving us this day our daily bread, which means that you are meeting our needs. Your daily bread is everything that we need is included in your bread, Lord God. We receive that this day. And we thank Amen. you, Father, that you are generous. We thank you that you are kind. We thank you that you are loving, merciful, gracious, and forgiving, that you would forgive our every sin and debt. And we will, this day, we will, Father. We don't want anything held back. And you said if we won't forgive, that you can't forgive us. So right now, with our mouths and with our confession, no matter what our minds are thinking, no matter how our feelings are about that That's person, right. we release forgiveness tonight in the name of Hallelujah. Jesus Christ. That's right. Because the power of forgiveness and the power of your word will break down all the bondage and the barriers that are causing us to continue to hold this guilt and this pain and this suffering in our life. We want to be free in Jesus Christ. And you said, whom the Son sets free is free, is indeed. free indeed to your Amen. glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, that you're not the one that has led us into this temptation, but that you're the one that delivers us from evil. Hallelujah. You're the one that delivers us from the evil one because yours is all the power all the glory forever and ever. Amen. Praise God. So we acknowledge you tonight, Father. Mm -hmm. We believe and we, we call to you, Father. We put, place our trust in you totally tonight to redeem and deliver, to save, to heal, and to restore life as only you can do through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. We love you all. God bless you. God bless you. We'll see you again soon. Praise mm -hmm. God. May the Lord bless you and keep you and continue to make his face to smile upon you. Amen. In Jesus' wonderful, loving, and powerful name.